Good morning, folks. Let's start with a satellite designed to give unprecedented mapping capabilities of our galaxy, including the position and movement of the stars with respect to us, each other, and the galaxy as a whole. The ESA is named her Gaia. Quick recommendation for Mars enthusiasts, giving alternative explanation for one massive crater on the red planet. Electric Universe folks might notice a similarity to what we'd expect from a discharge. This is Bruce Gary's latest photo of Comet Ison, a true color view. His Ison tracking website is linked in the About tab every day. He's in fifth gear confirming the comet is brightening. And while we're discussing comets, Linear has exploded. Well, maybe. Kinda. You see comets do this sometimes, but they do not always indicate a cataclysmic end to the comet. This major event is not visible with the naked eye, and if you read down to the bottom, Dr. Phillips even explains how this could have just been a single ice vein or other outgassing event that did not destroy the comet as a whole. Northwest Pacific still has twins who seem to want to check out Fukushima damage, but it's like they're afraid to get too close. Smart storms. Meanwhile, the hurricane threat from Raymond is weakening apart from the moisture shear. Looking at WOW's expert pressure charts, which I recommend is the best on the internet, we see a counterclockwise low on the east reinforcing a clockwise driving high pressure cell out west where they meet in the middle, sending cold air shooting southeast from Canada with that tiny low trough in southern Ohio. I mentioned the last part to demonstrate that the US wind map is darn on point from both a macro scale and down to the micro details where you see that spin not far from us here in Columbus. That storm we showed crossing the southern areas here dropped a tornado and caused isolated damage. Meanwhile, Europe, that leading convergence is a beast. Tornadoes, lightning, snowstorms to the north, flash floods in the UK, and wind damage. Solar wind shows either nothing or the weakest coronal hole stream in years, so I'm showing the high energy proton flux instead. Proof that significant events can develop out of seemingly neutral space weather. The flares are back. We've taken a few more M flares, still nothing in X class, Filaments are erupting as well. Yesterday's is now diagnosed as likely arriving as the third interplanetary shock on the heels of other surface events at a glancing blow on the 25th, midday. NASA Enlil Spiral confirms. Then yesterday, we saw our biggest blast in a while, an M4, directly Earth-facing. Tried to make the ejecta a bit more visible on SOHO here. This will be direct impact likely late on the 25th or early on the 26th and could produce or enhance ongoing geomagnetic storms. It is possible we will see more, perhaps even stronger flaring. The two sunspot groups, the active regions facing Earth, are diabolical. Multiple umbras in excess of Earth size and at least three delta spots in the flare maker to the north. South actually complexing now as well around the leading umbra. The Earth-facing coronal hole is currently blocked by the solar tsunami still in effect produced when that filament released, but it will affect Earth again soon. She is of only moderate power as the southern opening turning away has taken the top power spot on our star. But you can see the darkness up top hiding behind the expanding gases there, and even with only moderate coronal hole factors. There are more coming around the disk. Space weather impacts are set for the end of the week, and I'll cap an expected quake watch factor list by turning off the atmosphere on Stellarium and running the conjunctions that will play during that time. Watch should reach 7 and could reach 8 if more solar magnetic force rises. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.